All right, welcome back. Um, so in this video, we're going to make some scores. Um, we'll try to do that maybe two different ways and just talk about a third way that you might try. Um, make a timer and then just have a quick look at adding background, kind of creating your own background. I think you can kind of navigate that pretty easily. Um, so I won't spend too much time with that, but the, vary, the, the scores in the timer is, is very useful. Um, so I'm in my ball sprite where I'm going to make the score. Um, and I'm going to make the score in this way. Each time somebody hits the ball, they get one point. So it'll be the person with the most points um, wins and you hit the point. Um, we can do it the other way, but we'll start with this way. So in my blocks on the left side, we're going to be using the variable blocks on the bottom. And we kind of create what these are. This would be likely um, scores, like if it's a fighting game, the power, timers, um, things of that nature where they you know, build up numbers basically. Um, so the first thing we have is this make variable button. I've already done this because I was just kind of testing things out. Um, but what we do is we click make variable and then we just choose what we want. So I have player one, two already. I'm gonna just make a player four. I have for all sprites. None of that's clicked. I hit okay. And it will come on my list. And then it appears on my game screen. I'm gonna unclick it and then it's gone. But I already have some, some things made up here. Um, so what we're gonna do is now we need to create the score to function. So I'm gonna get a new um, green flag because I don't wanna add it here just because if something goes wrong, I don't wanna like mess with that. I know that works perfectly. Leave it and do a new green flag. Um, so the first thing I want to happen when I push the green flag is when a new game starts, I want my score to go back to zero. So I click my variable and I say set variable and I have to click this variable, which one, because I have a lot of them set player one to zero and I do another one set player two to zero so I click the green flag scores will go back now I'm going to click player one and player two and they'll appear on my screen so you see I kind of was playing around with it before and played a game and the score is very high so I needed to go back to zero when I start anyway so when I click the green flag the score goes back to zero perfect now I need to keep track of score. So I'm gonna to need to put that into a forever loop. I don't want my set score in the forever loop because it will always just keep the score, will always just set it to zero all the time. I don't wanna do that. But in a forever loop, I want the program to notice whenever the ball hits the paddle, the score should change. So that's gonna be our very um, handy if then statement. So if something happens, then the score changes by one. So I'll go back to my variable and it's not going to be set. It's going to change my variable by one. And I'll just do player one here by one. And so what happens if, if it's touching, the touching is the sensing button or the sensing block. And we can sense by color or by sprite so i'm going to do this mouse pointer and stick it in there and this is my characters basically or my sprites so i have paddle one if touching paddle one then change player one score by one so let's see if that works green flag player one hit it Get there, oh, two, perfect. Player two, nothing should happen because we didn't code it yet. So I'm just gonna do the exact same thing in this branch. I won't make a new um, one, but I'm just, I, don't need an, I don't need another forever loop. I can just put a new if then in there. So I'm gonna put it underneath if then, touching the sensor button touching paddle two, then I change 
my variable, which is player two score by one. And that should work and be exactly the same. So every time you hit it, you get a point. So we can play like first one to 10 wins or whatever, but I think a timer is probably a little bit better. Um, so let's create a timer. And as you guessed, we're gonna use variables. So I would do make a new variable. I called a timer. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new, um, when green flag is clicked, just to keep it simple. If my timer doesn't work, I don't mess with anything else but the timer. And uh, I'm gonna set this game for 60 seconds. So when the green flag starts, I need the timer to go back to 60, to start at six. I'm gonna do backwards, 60 down to zero. So when the green flag is clicked, I'm going to set my variable, which my variable is the timer, to 60. Easy, right? Then I'm going to need a forever loop, because I, or at least a 60 loop. So I can, I can do that. I can get a control, repeat 10 times, repeat 60 times, but repeating 60 times seems... Um, yeah, all right, let's do that. Let's do a repeat 60 times because we may need that at some point. Um, I'm going to repeat 60 times because it's 60 seconds. And then I'm going to do some stuff. I'm going to, actually, this might, might not work exactly. Um, I need, it starts at 60. I need it to wait for one second and then change by one. So I'm gonna do a control, wait one second, and then my variable, change my variable, which is the timer, not by one, because then the numbers will go up, I'm gonna change it by negative one, and then it will go down to zero, right? So it's gonna start at 60, repeat 60 times, wait one second, change by negative one, go, 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 go. I want one more thing to happen. When it gets to zero, I want the whole game to stop, right? So after all that, the game can just stop all. So I can go to control and just stop all. So after it repeats that process 60 times, everything will end. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm not going to play it right now um, because that's a long time for you to sit there and wait. Actually, I'll just edit that part out while we do it. So green flag and let's check that everything works. Oh, my mistake. I got to come down to variable and I got to click on timer and then timer is there. So I'm going to do it again. All right, here we go. Get to zero, stop all, and player two wins by eight. So very um, nice score there um, that works very well. We can also do a score that um, you get a score for each time someone misses. Um, Actually, you know what? Let's not do that right now. Um, let's look at just changing um, the background a little bit. So I'm gonna move my head for now. I can kind of talk, just talk to people if they wanna do that later, um, that score. But in my backdrop is over here. I'm gonna click that backdrop. And it's gonna take me, um, this, sorry, let's go back there. That is like, set backdrops. Um, <clears throat> but I can also go, I can choose a backdrop that already has like be in space if there might have been a tennis field but it didn't quite look the same. I'm going to do a surprise, no. I can upload a picture um, which is going to be quite useful if we, um, when we make our own game you might want to add your own background or uh, if we were making an animation, you know, that you had a character that moved. But anyway, we're going to paint our background today and try to make like a 
um, tennis looking court. Okay, I can just move that for now. So I'm gonna go a little bit smaller here just to make it easier. And I'm gonna make my whole field green. So I'm gonna click that um, square and just kind of draw a square. It can be bigger than that, like that. And I'm gonna fill it with, dun, dun, dun. That looks tennessey. Maybe a little too bright. Yeah, like that, that's perfect. And I close it and there you go. There's my tennis looking field. I might wanna put some lines on here. Um, so I'm gonna just take this line thing and draw a, uh, draw a line, whoop. I'm gonna use the back button to just get rid of that and do my line again. Sort of what looks like straight down the middle. And I'm gonna do another, actually no, I'll just leave it like that for now. Nope, I'm gonna change my mind again and not make my line all the way up because I want my timer to kind of be there. So I'm gonna do like, This, so I have space for my timer. Hopefully there's enough space. And I'm gonna do another little one um, where my player score goes. And I think that's good. I could like really try to draw a tennis court if I wanted to, um, but that's not necessary. Um, there is another way to keep score. Okay, I, should, I guess I'll say it now. Um, that I can put on the very end, like behind my paddle, a thin strip of whatever, yellow, white, a different color right there, and then a different color on the other side, and use a different kind of button or code um, block that says if the tennis ball is sensing or touching that color, you get a point. So that will be another way, another easy way to make a score um, we used, if it was touching the paddle, you get a point. But if I wanted to do it like when a player misses, if, if player one misses the ball, player two gets a point, I can put it as if, you know, let's say this side, the left side here is white. I can say if the tennis ball touches white, player two gets a point. If this side was uh, yellow or purple, whatever, I can say if the tennis ball touches purple, player one gets a point, and then it would be like the opposite way that you get a point for the other one. I won't do all that now, but I think you can maybe figure that out yourself because we've done those blocks. You would just need to make a nice thin line of color, and I would do that with a, another rectangle, and we're looking at the white line here. It's maybe hard to see, but I gotta be like right in that little white line. So I can do like, whoop, tiny, tiny bit, that looks good. And then I'm just gonna change the color to red. And then on the other side, I need to do a different color though. That's the important because I distinguishes, you know, who gets the points. So I did a thin one. I'll change that to, yeah, these are not good color choices <laughs> like that. It's all good. And then I am gonna go back to my code and I can uh, see it like that. So I'm gonna, yeah, maybe put the timer. Actually, I don't like the way those, I don't like the way that line kind of looks. Um, I would change that if I had to, but for now, that's just easy way to make a background. So if I put that, the ball, the line's not quite in the center, um, but yeah, you can see you can paint your own background and use colors to help uh, with your score. So that is it. I think we should, um, yeah, be able to finish pretty soon and have maybe a mini Pong tournament and see who's gonna be the Pong master. All right, um, just let me know if you have questions.